It's a dimension of society's creation of a man with a heart of stone It's just the expected, he loves being rejected and now he's all alone Rosie B, you know what to do. Good morning. This is a message for a Miss Sparfield. My name is Dominic Richardson of Howell and Son Solicitors in Bickenhoe. I've received a call from the CPS this morning and need to liaise with you at a more convenient time in relation to a matter of some urgency regarding your case. If you could call me back, please, I would be very grateful and we can arrange a meeting. Many thanks. Bye-bye for now. You're listening to Bick and Hull Radio. Hello and welcome once again to another evening in the greenhouse with me, Rosie Barfield, and my ever-doting producer, Neil. Say hi, Neil. Hi, Neil. Oh, I'm so pleased that the medication seems to be working this time. OK, this evening we will be answering your emails, tweets, texts, calls, the lot of it. It seems our caller that never was, Dave, from last night, has made quite an impression on you lot. So, Dave, if you're listening, mate, our window's open at 9pm later, and we can, power outage permitting, get you on tonight. Back after this. Next to the breast, radio's the best. Bick and Hole Radio. How many calls is that now? Um, 17. Oh, 18. That's fucking mad, isn't it? We haven't had this many calls since I ballsed up the weather girl's name. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, what was it again? Jill Doe. Oh, yeah. So, we're trying again tonight, getting him on like. Oh, look at you now. Yesterday, you didn't want him on at all. Yeah, well, I feel a lot better today. Ah, scored last night then, did you? Hey, come on then, who with? It wasn't chicken tonight again, was it? No. And no one says scored anymore, you square. It was Josh. Josh? Oh, yeah, long story. This morning, though, right, I got up, went to the bog. I could see a reflection of myself as a pissed, and I thought, I look like fucking Anne Whittacombe, right? So I thought, I gotta sort myself out. And no word of a lie, I went to put my hair up, and the entire chicken nugget fell on the floor! <laughs> Came in handy, actually, as he didn't have anything in. But, Josh, the guy that was chatting to you last night, that Josh... Yes, fucking hell, what's with all the questions? Oh, no, nothing, just surprised, that's all. I didn't think he'd be your type. My type? Do I look like I have a type? Oh, OK, I just didn't think you'd be his type then. What the fuck do you know about his type? Nothing. Shut it then. (laughs) He's quite funny really, isn't he? He pretended he didn't want me to come round. Felt awkward about touching me. So he said, I've heard them all. Well, maybe he didn't. Yes, Neil. I did think that as he pummeled me so mercilessly. Did he hurt you? What? Of course he did. I asked him to. Look, I'm just looking out for you. I just don't understand why anyone would do that. Especially him. He'd had a few just making sure he didn't take advantage. Look, my life is my own, okay? I'll do what I want with whom I want. It takes two to tango. And besides, did you see the last guy who tried to take advantage of me? Look, I just don't want you to get hurt. I appreciate that, but what do you know about hurt? Let's leave it there, shall we? I don't need any more judgement in my life, okay? That's all I've ever had. 
I need you to be there, sat in the corner, your dopey ass, rolling your eyes at things I say. I need you to have me back, not stab me in it. Look, I'll never do that. I can't speak for anyone else, though. Then don't. I'm fine. OK. Did you know, I often wonder whether Channel 5 would be interested in a documentary about your exploits. Why Channel 5? Oh, you know why you'd be on Channel 5. Is Channel 5 still going? It's clinging on. Although I'm not entirely sure how. Mr Folding, are you someone whose nightly activities consist of watching... What is it? Fraggle Rock. Have the occasional danger wank before your dear old mother comes in with yet another big old cup of tea and mint viscounts. Are you the big corduroy Casanova still trying to cast judgment on my life? I hope for your sake your life insurance is up to date. Um, nope. Just my inoculations. Fuck you. <laughs> nah, come on. You're my best mate, aren't you? Besides, I know too much about you. I know where they're buried. You don't know everything. <laughs> I know as much as I can stomach. Anyway, if you do need to talk about anything, I'm here, OK? You're on in five seconds. That's still enough time to kick your ass. Welcome back. Now, as many of you will know, local elections are nearly upon us and therefore it'll soon be time to get out there and cast all important votes that could shape the future of this wonderful community we have in Bicken Hall. To help make up your minds, we have Bucky's favourite Conservative candidate, Roland Blythe Esquire III, in the studio, who will be talking about his latest bid to close all of Bicken Hall's food banks. Should he be elected? If you ask me, this is the dynamism we need in Bicken Hall. Now, the news with Barbara Dish, and my, my, she really is. This is Bicken Hall Radio News. News for locals with me, Barbara Dish. Do you think he'll really close all the food banks? Yeah. I went to his campaign party, didn't I? Champagne, caviar, the works. He had that certain determined look in his eye. You know? Which one? The one that droops ever so slightly lower than the other? You really don't like Tories, do you? (laughs) As people? No. As politicians, though? Uh, no. As lovers? Well, I wouldn't know. (laughs) I bet you've kissed a Tory, haven't you? I'm bound to have. There was that investment banker, Rory, you know. The one with the house in Henley on Thames. Our collector. Do you think he was a Tory? Yeah. You're probably right. And please, lower your eyebrow. Next on Channel 5, Rosie Barfield is in search for love. But there's one very strict rule. They must be Mr. Right. Wing. Find out how she gets on in Reese Smog, Marry a Void. <clears throat> and later, that lovable Ramona Neil Folding and the short little Danish fella welcome 12 new contestants into the tent of the brand new series of the Great British Flake Off! Flake? I find that really offensive. Of course you do, because you're a flake. Why am I a flake? Because you're an absolute idiot. You constantly just keep talking. You should listen to yourself. Ah, what a classic. Thank you all for joining us in what is yet another gorgeous evening in The Greenhouse. As avid listeners of the show would know, this week we've welcomed Dave into the garden and we wanted to get him on tonight, but we've had this from him instead. It reads, Thank you, Rosie, and Neil, of course, for taking the time to try and chat with me last night. It really does help. People have always encouraged me to talk about issues I have been having and it's not easy. Truth is I have suffered with crippling anxiety and depression for some time and my life has taken a detour so to speak that I'm not coping with well at all. I feel I have nowhere to turn and no one to talk to about it. I haven't been in this area for very long and lack any form of friendship. I live in a bit of a hovel as it's all I can afford with a few other people who I don't seem to be getting on with. And your show is a pleasant distraction from my thoughts. It's okay, though. 
I have a partially full bottle of whiskey with my name on it. Actually, I have two. Mainly because it's the only thing that gets me to where I need to be, as quick as I need to get there. The feeling is soothing. I feel as if I'm not really me. And I can live with that. Just about. Sadly though, I'll live to regret it tomorrow morning. It's a funny thing, life. You come into this world crying. And I imagine you leave it in just the same way. I'll leave you now with this. Now back to my ladder. Go. I must lie down, down where all, all the ladders, ladders start. In, in the, the foul, foul rag, rag and bone and shot of the heart. Yeet. Kind regards. Dave. Dave. Thank you for that message. We're here for you. Our audience will listen to any old tripe. <laughs> Let's face it. They've listened to us prattle on for, what is it? Four years now. Give yourself a break if you can. We'll get you back on soon, yeah? Chin up, hun. This is for you. <sighs> Fuck me. Look at me. Look at me now. Do I look depressed? I feel like it's dripping off me. Do you think we should put a disclaimer on at the end of the show, like... If you've been affected by... Uh, it wouldn't hurt. Um, but are there any depressed people in Bickenhole? Apart from Dave, you and me? Right, I need a drink. Coming down the pins? We've got another hour of the show. Oh, fuck. I'm gone. Where's my gift flask? Can you pass me phone? Top. We are on the fence right now, seeing what you've been tweeting to us. Um, let's see. Okay, so we've got a message from Ads Bikini Holes a Goal. Oh, I see. It says, Guys, what's your thoughts on flat earthers? And this is a message for my favourite whore... culturist, Rosie. Can I come and trim your bush, darling? Uh, darling, spelled without the G at the end there. Um, okay. Well, Rosie's not here right now, so I'll pass this very important message on. But a friendly bit of advice, mate. Wear some gloves. <laughs> uh, flat earthers. Well, I'm a keen believer that everyone has a right to free thought, no matter how ludicrously idiotic it may be. I hope that's the answer you wanted, any hole. Uh, judging by your Twitter profile pic, probably not. Um, I'd love to hear Rosie's views on this. Rosie! Ah, here she is, Dame Judy Wench herself, feeling any better? Hey, we've had a tweet. Flat Earthers, recommend? Oh yeah, light, comfortable. I wouldn't wear anything else on me feet during this kind of weather. What? I knew it would be good. Back after this. The man from the radio, he say yes. Bick and Hole Radio. You alright? Yeah. Sure? Yeah, I said. Oh, you look as though you've contracted bird flu, judging by your meat-related fetishes. I know that's not too far-fetched. <laughs> the police just called me. Why? They want me to come into the station. Tonight. Oh, I thought that was all over. Not that you ever said too much about it. Me too. What did they say? Not much. I don't suppose they can over the phone. Do you want me to finish the show? No, no, it'll just be some forms to sign. You want me to come with you? Nah. Nah, come on. Let's get this show done. What is it to be this evening, then? What manner of absurdity will befall us? <sighs> oh, I know what I'll do. Oh, what? Liven things up. Get your mind off things. Oh, shut up. I don't need that. You're making me sound like bloody Dave. Oh, and what's wrong with that? I don't know. Oh, come on. 
No call cool screening, quick fire calls as they come. Bound to be a few big uns, juicy ones too. Oh, I don't mind a big juicy one, mate. Well, so they say. That makes you safe then, doesn't it? <laughs> Welcome, it's that time again, where we open up the lines and discuss what really makes you tick, bich. Remember folks, whether you're in a rut, a cheating slut, or secretly taking it up the bus, we don't judge, not in my garden. Alright, who's on line one? Hello? Hi, who is this? It's Brian. Hi Brian, what can we do for you? Yeah, I'd like to report a missing show. Who do we have on line five? Good evening, my love, my name is Marjorie. Hello, Marjorie. Thanks for the call. What can we help you with? Well, I'm a 67-year-old widower, dear. I was rather hoping I could advertise for a bit of companionship, you know. Someone to play bowls with, have a chippy supper with, or a nice bit of cock. If my show could do that, Marjorie, I wouldn't be here presenting it. Goodbye. You're on the air. Hello, Rosie. Hello, mysterious caller man. What can I do for you? Haven't you heard? I'm out. Oh, well done. Congratulations. That's a very brave thing to do, my friend. Keep it going, Chuck. Cooking on gas tonight, me. Next. Uh, hi. Hello there. You don't sound scary or insane. Please tell me you've got something interesting to chat about. Um. I'm not sure about that. Um, I, I couldn't sleep, so I thought I'd um, give you what you wanted. You sound like my kind of man. Where have you been all my life? What's your name, love, and how can we help? Uh, well, I'd like to talk about a few things, if I can. Some, a little delicate. My name is... Um, Dave. If you've been affected by any issues raised in this episode, or if you're finding it hard to cope, please don't suffer in silence. We know how difficult it can be, and sometimes how impossible it seems to open up and talk. But by doing so, you could find the help you need, and it could save your life. Please research local advice hubs, community groups, and NHS initiatives in your area that will listen, advise and support you through whatever you're going through. Alternatively, reach out to us directly. Contact us through social media and get involved with the hashtag We Are All Dave to share your story. You have been listening to Fenella Fudge, Claudia Greer, Alan Lear, Curtis Ledsham, Nadia Lee, Richard Oliver, James Phillips, Michael Prosper, Hannah Thompson, Ashley Tyler and David Tyson. Fifty Shades of Dave was written and produced by David Lee and recorded at Material Studios Liverpool and has been made possible with the help from the Martin Gallia Project and Involve Northwest. Thank you for listening.